now connected to the gamer down. Hello friends and welcome back to the Gamer Down and Rift Noob Adventures, episode 16. And this is your host, Dark Hostess. And today we're going to start off talking about the Rift World War kicking off March 30th. And it's supposed to be a gigantic, huge event that's supposed to last about a week. And you're going to want to be there. There's going to be all kinds of exclusive loot. And it says including a, a spectral horse. Hmm, a spectral horse. I uh, wonder what that looks like. I hope it's not identical to the one from WoW. If it is, oh my god. Anyway, uh, I wonder how you get that thing too. It is, there's no elaboration on that. But you're going to want to be there March 30th at least for a little bit. And get what you can and kill what you can. So if you're playing Rift, you're going to want to be around from March 30th till I guess about... Uh, what's a week after March 30th? Uh, what is it? April 6th? So, yeah. I'm going to try and get some sneak previews up. But no promises as of yet. I have to see how that goes. But first, I finally reached level 40. And actually, I'm 44 right now. But at this point right here, I finally reached level 40. And I finally saved up enough cash to... Uh, get me a mount yeah it was a little hard decision which one to buy so i thought i'd pick the black one yeah since i'm dark hostess and a lot of people think i'm dark horses no no it's a long story and i've used this code name on and off since the 90s so anyway for something. you can see all the little horses or they're not really horses really they're like a, some sort of lion beast and what i can't wait to uh save up and uh I believe it's the Order of Mathos, and you can get this ape-like uh, mount, man. That, that thing looks cool. That looks too damn hilarious. It looks like you're riding a little ape around or a gorilla around. I must admit, it was a little bit of a struggle coming up with the 35 Platinum, but that was my own fault. I had bought a lot of gear off the auction house. I know that's a bad idea, but... It's an old habit of mine. I just love to have nice gear when I'm leveling up. It just feels so good instead of just bullshit all the time, you know. Anyway, it's good to have a couple of epics in your arsenal when you're leveling up. Make the process a little bit faster, you know. And in this game where gear is such an important facet, you know, you need to have good gear. That's just anything uh, that helps improve your gear with go get you some PvP gear and I have kind of a mixture of all kinds of gear, from quest gear to PvP gear to, uh, you know, auction house gear and cairn gear as well. Now, in my last video, I had mentioned how difficult the leveling was. Well, it turned out to be my own damn fault, and I was in the complete wrong zone. I had skipped the lantern hook in the shimmer sand zones yeah so that put a real damper on my leveling and I've uh, since went back and blew out like four levels in no time there's just a ton of quests there and everything was about my level as well and I finally caught up to my level and the quest levels so I've went back to Iron Peaks I've been all over the damn place to be honest and here as you can see is Lantern Hook and I just kind of just totally forgot about this place I had started off on the Moonshade Highlands uh, believing that was where I was supposed to go and the my uh, bread my bread quest my breadcrumb quest to here was like so early on that it was you know I didn't have any quests here so I didn't even know why I got the bread crumb quest at that that level I was just kind of a uh, misleveling you know they need to go and fix that it's just you know it's kind of dumb this actually turned out to be a very cool zone and as you can see like I had mentioned in previous videos that some of the coolest places are actually underground so always look underground you know, look in that cave you pass by because you might be passing by some something really awesome because I've 
uh, you know, went and looked in caves and then just been blown away by, like, how vast some of them are and just how elaborate some of the decorations and especially the, uh, like, cultist compounds. Yeah, they really decorate nice. And if you're a regular watcher of the Rift Noob Adventures, then you know that I try to show the story quests from each zone and... And this time it just became just too much of a gigantic mess, honestly. I had tried to, uh, you know, put something together, but the quests were just going nowhere. Like the story quests, they were, were so many grinding quests and no big cutscenes. But this quest here was really cool, I thought. You have to wait till this uh, guard walks off and you have to steal these supplies. And... If you don't, if you if you, he's a little too close, then he will attack you and beat you to a pulp. He's an elite, so yeah, you want to watch that, and you have to wait and watch him patrol three times because it just it seems like if he's even just facing your way, that he'll get on you. And he killed me once. So. Yeah. Anyhow, I just wanted to check out, show you this model that I was checking out the other day, man. Isn't that just awesome? A one-eyed scorpion. Isn't that just cool? I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about the blandness of the models in R Rift, you know, and uh, I believe that comes from the uh, player models because the player models are damn bland. I mean, I have so many twins out there. I remember walking by a guy who looked so, just identical to me. I mean, it was just almost hilarious. And it's just, I don't know. They need more variety with the uh, pl player models, but... As for the monster models, oh man, they've done a great job on those. They, there's pl tons of variety on those. So they reuse them a little too often. You know, it's too many damn clones. They need more variety. And as you can see, I've been picking up story quests just all over the place. And they were just like short story quests. They were like uh, only about two stages long. And, uh,. I don't know, they just kind of seem like regular quests, but they were labeled story. So, I guess that just means they had something to do with the main plot of the, of the thing, and it doesn't actually have to mean that the, the quest is going to be totally badass. You know, I'm going to end in the cutscene. You know, that's what I was really thinking. I thought, okay, big story quest, and that means that it's going to end in a gigantic cutscene, and blah blah blah, like they've been doing, but... Nah, not at this point. They just, you know, end like, you know, killing a named mob such as this. And, you know, just nothing really big going on, you know. I mean, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a cool fight, you know. But it's, you know, very basic. You know, you just kill off his ads and then then you can get back to killing him. And, you know, they're, they're not elite or anything, so there's no real challenge, you know. They were just kind of there. So while I move around to these various story quests... Let's talk about those patch notes for a second. What are they doing? You know, what are they doing? I, I know they want to balance out the PvP and all of that, but they're hitting that nerf bat hard. You know, I mean, they're just bringing it out and whipping everybody right and left with the thing. And what you know, at such a, an early stage in the game, I mean, so many people are upset. The forums are ablaze with people just. You know, completely beside themselves, and even longtime supporters of the game are finding themselves on the opposite side now. You know, I mean, I don't know why they're gonna they're gonna add so many of these damn nerfs to the game because everything seems about right right now, and and they're nerfing some of my favorite abilities as well. You know, and it, it's just stupid, man. I mean, it really is stupid to balance the PvE around PvP and vice versa, you know. Uh, I thought that they could have solved that when they were developing this game. I mean, like I said in, in the past, you know, they've copied WoW and they copied WoW's mistakes. Why, why the hell couldn't they have copied WoW and left the mistakes out? You know, that was possible. That was completely possible. You know, they, they could have... Uh, made that your you know your pvp character is completely you know separate from your pve character what every mmo should have done from square one but nobody's ever did it you know i just don't understand why none of these developers want to do this you know why do they constant constantly you know balance their games around pvp and pve throwing the other one off it just makes no damn 
sense. You know, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just see this repeated in so many MMOs. It's it's just a damn, uh, you know, ridiculous that they can't solve this problem when it's solvable. You know, just have a completely different state for your character when you go into PvP. You know, your your character has different abilities when you're in in the battleground or warfront. And I, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe they're just concerned about the open world, or I don't know. I mean, it's fixable. I know the damn thing's fixable. I, I've seen, you know, other games attempted at least, you know, like, well, like Lord of the Rings, you know, like, uh, they have, they have a different PVP style. They have monster play, which is completely different. Your character doesn't ever engage in normal PVP. You can duel, but that's about it, you know. And so they don't have to really worry about the balancing, you know, between the, luck. between the two. It's my lucky day. Like in Lord of the Rings, you can bring your real character to fight the monsters that Good are being controlled luck. by other players, and vice versa. You know, you can play a monster, or you can play your character fighting the monsters. You know, so it's it's uh, it's a totally different system than any other game I've seen. You know, and I think that developers should take note, and they should see what's going on and I, I don't know what they're going to do with this game now you know if they're going to keep doing this and if they're going to keep nerfing due to pvp or pve you know it's not going to work it hasn't worked in wow i mean the balancing is you know they're constantly trying to balance it in wow and they're not they're never going to do it you know they're they're constantly trying but there's always the flavor of the month you know and that's what they're doing now to rip they're going to start producing the flavor of the month what's the newest combination of souls that makes you the most uber you know i mean people played paladins and wow forever you know because that was the main reason you know they could go and solo practically anything and uh nowadays uh, they've nerfed the hell out of them and you know that was even one reason i left wow because they just nerfed my paladin to, to death and they nerfed my druids to death and now you know uh now Rift's doing it. So what are we all going to do? Hmm? At least one positive thing on the patch notes is they're finally getting around to fixing the exposed buff. And instead of uh, mobs doing extra damage now, you're just slowed a little bit more with each stack. So even though that still sucks, I think they should just completely abolish the exposed buff. I mean, you know, it's just pointless. It really is pointless. I mean, you should be able to run away when you want to run away from monsters. You know, you, it, it, you should not have to be forced to fight everything. You know, just trying to walk and explore. You know, it's just completely idiotic. But anyway, it's it's going to be better than it is now. You know, at least. And I, I do plan on going on, going on the alpha server and seeing all the things that are going on and the things to come. And uh, you know, I'm going to check out that war event too as well so, we'll all see that we'll all check that out together one thing about rift that you know was such a strong selling point the was the variety you know people were allowed to dps or heal or tank you know generally you know mages usually couldn't tank worth a damn anyway because of their cloth and, but the armor you know armor class really doesn't do much in this game I mean, uh, the higher your armor level is, it it honestly doesn't mean that much to you. You know, you're better off with, like, a higher dodge and dexterity, actually. And, uh, I mean, I don't know, they, they have a lot to work out with this game. You know, they have so much to work out with this game. And here, I just wanted to show you a little spot where you can get a lot of titanium if you're looking for some titanium. It was this little cave here in Iron Peaks, and... It has this uh, really absurd spawn rate on the titanium. It is a lot faster than just cruising around and uh, looking for a node. I mean, if, if you just hang out in this cave and just keep clearing out the mobs, then you can continually mine you some titanium, man. I mean, it's not really exploitive or anything. It's just it's a lot higher rate than you would find if you were just out, you know, looking for it, you know, on the land and having to fight through so much BS. You just, you know, it's a really, you know, it's it's, it's the system I use for mining. It's uh, in Rift, at least, is uh, I'll find a cave because that seems to be a very rapid spawn place for nodes. 
And then, you know, in, you know, depending on what level you are, like uh, now I'm uh, in like Shimmer Sand. I'm in a, a cave over there uh, mining that Carninium or whatever, what kind of, whatever silly name they've attached to that metal. And, uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's how you do it that, in Rift, at least. How, that's how I do it, and it seems to work out pretty good. If you just, like, kind of hang out in a cave for a while and uh, just devote yourself to mining some nodes, then you'll get a pretty good haul at the end of, end of it all. And right here, this was uh, one of the story quests as well, and I filmed it, you know, just for the hell of it. Just because you get to disguise yourself as one of the cultists and you see I was trying to find an easy way into this tent and uh, yeah I was trying to avoid these damn mobs I'd already fought like thousands and thousands of these guys and I was just you know about about done killing for the day so I finally made my way in and disguised myself as Illidian ha 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 the most hilarious part is every time this guy moves he goes uh, uh. He grunts. You hear that? I don't know. I just thought that was damn, damn funny. Sounds like he's so constipated <laughs> or something like that. And anyway, you have to go in here and you just witness this little meeting between these two figureheads. Uh, they're supposed to be important figures. And, you know, uh, that's an another problem I kind of have with this game is... Uh, you know, I, I always seem like I'm bitching, but, you know, I'm just a critic, you know. It's, I always bring up the bad stuff, and it's just the, the lore is just very hard to get into. I, I don't know why. I, a lot of people complain about this, and I feel it myself, and I don't know what it is exactly. I, I, I think it's maybe just the predictability. You hear about the tools needed to unlock these frozen soldiers of yours? Indeed. We have uncovered the vanguard of Crucia's frozen soldiers and expect to find many more as we excavate further. Very well. We have stockpiled the thawing devices and relics needed to break them free. You remember our deal. Your aid in our search for Calyx, as well as any Tidestone we uncover. Of course, my dear Commander. Assuming these work as you say they will, you shall have the resources of the Storm Legion at your disposal. Now, if they had only made more quests like this one, you know, with such awesome voice acting, I mean, they had, you know, such excellent voice actors at their disposal, why didn't they take advantage of it, you know? And I guess it was just time, really. I mean, I guess it would take just such an, a, a, too much time to add voice acting to so much. But, you know, if they had only went that extra mile and did that, then I believe people wouldn't have such problems with more. I know that I wouldn't. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this Rift Noob Adventures for the, for today. And i uh, going to have a lot more coming, you know, with that world event and all that good stuff. And I'm hoping I get that spectral horse. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm going to be farming the hell out of that. And hopefully by then I'll be 50th level, too. So that will really help out. This has been Dark Hostess for The Gamer Down. Please join us next time and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It really helps out quite a bit and it motivates me to get these out quicker and to do more. It does. It really does. And especially when you thumbs up a video as well if you like it. If you don't, you know, I'm not forcing you. <laughs>